Nothing is more sincere than to be ordered into a war to die or to be maimed for life. Last time I got hit, I got hit in the head. We had a 57 killed and 140 wounded. And like my whole platoon was completely wiped out except for about three or four guys. I feel trapped in my life. I feel like I'm trapped in, the, in, a, in some kind of shell, that something that's never going to go away. I'm, I'm suicidal at times and, and uh, hopelessness, I'm, you know. And, and the dreams, I think because of thinking about Vietnam so much and how hopeless that situation is, I just kind of carried it into my life today. Cleveland, Ohio, 1967. So unaware of my innocence to the real world. Here I was at college to create a dream I would continue to chase. I mean, that's what it's for, right? For everyone to find a place, to be part of society, to find our purpose, no matter what the stakes. Lyndon B. Johnson was at the throne of the United States. The Vietnam War was in full swing. It was spring. Most of my friends were over in Vietnam on what they say is a vacation. Blazing guns and barbecuing. Peace and love! Peace and love! Love not war! Love not war! Love not war! Love not war! And the war in Vietnam! And the war in Vietnam! And the war in Vietnam! Guns around! To hell with national honor! Turn he guns around! To hell with national honor! Turn he guns around! To hell with national honor! Turn he guns around! Join the crowd! Join the crowd! Join us, man! Join us! 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 Join
I've lost. When my country calls for me, I want to be there. I've waited too long for this. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I'll be remembered as a hero, unlike you bums walking our streets. We want to bring the peace. You're just feeding the fight. You're really going to throw everything away, everything you've built, to go to Nam. Yeah, my career could wait. This is the real deal. All my friends are over there. I thought I could stay here and focus on college and baseball. My father got to go to World War II. My granddad got to go to World War I. This is my chance to do something great. And where are they now? Serious question. The problem isn't here, Arvin. It's overseas. It's a death train. You might come back from Vietnam alive, but your soul won't. Your happiness won't. You won't unsee everything that happened to you. You should get you and your little hippie freaks to go over there. You'd make some good sandbags. Arvin! I'm sorry, I tried. This isn't the answer. I'm 21. All my friends were over there making history. Whilst I'm stuck here doing some degree that's not contributing towards anything right now. You don't get it. You don't get it, Arvin. Your grandfather was, was killed in World War I. Your own father died in World War II. Oh no, I get that, Mom. But this is different. I promise you, this is different. Continuing a family legacy. What? Continuing death in the family? What kind of legacy is that? But this isn't a world war, Mom. This is different. I just feel like I'm stuck here. I have no friends here. They're all over there. I just... I feel like I'm useless. I feel like I'm doing nothing right now. But should this war be happening? You need to ask yourself that, Arvin. All those dead over there, it's, it's useless. People killing each other. For what? But there's obviously a reason our government wants us over there. They're not just gonna send young men over for no reason. Look, this is what I want to do. And I've made my mind up. You're completely disregarding my feelings about this. Please, please, Arvin, please see how selfish you're being. I'm just trying to stop you from being over there, then realizing what a huge mistake you've made. You can't make decisions for me anymore, Mom. Like I said, I'm 21. 
I'm going. And that's the end of it. I'm sorry. I can't even look at you. I will. Or call. Okay, okay. If you can. I will, Mom. I will. Look, I'm serious, Arv. I mean, God knows how long you're going to be over there. I'm going to be worried every minute of every day. This isn't about you, Mom. This is about me. This is my. This is my future. This is what I want to do. I know. I just. I find it hard to understand why. You don't have to understand, Mom. You just have to accept it. I'm sorry. Just... Please... Come home to me, Arv. That's all I ask. Just please promise me you'll come home safe. I will. I promise. It's better if you, if you did for the photograph, but it's up to you, man. I'm good. This heat is very hot. The what? The heat is very hot here. You'll, you'll cool off on the boat. So you're a photographer, right? I, I suppose so with the camera. If I knew I could have been a photographer here, I would have done that. That's more of a vacation, right? I mean, it's no vacation with the shit I see, man. Uh, they give you a gun? 
Me and the cameraman. Good luck. Shit, we, we gotta load up the boat. Where are you from anyway, man? Ohio. Cleveland? Yeah. No shit! <laughs> you from there too? Yeah. Indians? Yeah! <laughs> Holy shit, man! <laughs> So, uh, what, what did you do before all this? Well, uh, I studied biology in Cleveland, and I had a baseball scholarship. After this, I hope to uh, continue being a soldier. But, uh, I don't know. What about you? That's, that's neat. I mean, me, I, I worked for a, for a journal, you know, a newspaper company before all this, and, you know, my photos back then, they're, they're nothing compared to this. See, I, I could auction these off. Maybe, you know, by the end of this, get a nice house for the family, the kids, you know, the dream house, the whole thing. You know, after all this, man, maybe me and you can catch an catch a Indians game, you know? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. on patrol made contact with the elusive enemy when the Viet Cong struck in a variation of his favorite tactic, a surprise attack from the shadows. But the VC, already aware he has little chance of winning a stand-up fight, is learning he is being engaged by a fighting force quite different from that he met and defeated a decade ago. 
His own guerrilla tactics are being turned against him, and he is frequently trapped in our ambush, set up by the patrols that are moving constantly. Where's the medic? I am the medic! Shit! Shake dreams from your hair, my pretty child, my sweet one. Choose the day and choose the sign of your day, the day's divinity. First thing you see. A vast, radiant beach and a cool, jeweled moon. Couples naked race down by its quiet side. And we laugh like soft, mad children smug in the woolly cotton brains of infancy. The music and voices are all around us. Enter again the sweet forest, enter the hot dream, come with us. Everything is broken up in dances. Scattered on dawn's highway bleeding, ghosts crowd the young child's fragile eggshell mind. Saigon. Fuck. I might have been end. 38 degrees. I'm dripping with sweat. It's 82 percent humidity. Death was on my mind. All that was on my mind. I lost count of the lives I took over the past few weeks. I didn't know what emotion to feel. I just felt stuck here, stationed, waiting for my next mission in the jungle. I didn't feel present. In the jungle, I did. We weren't sent here for no reason. Why would the U.S. want to kill their own men for no reason? But I guess the fight was more important than death. 
Is this right? I don't know. If I was back in the jungle, I wouldn't be getting these stupid thoughts, questioning everything. I'm here to make history, but I didn't want to waste my time in here, losing my sense of focus for when I need to fight. I tried to kill time. Coffee, alcohol, cards, meditation. It's bullshit. I needed more excitement. I've still not written to Maria, my mother. I didn't know what to write. Every time I picked up the pencil, my brain froze. I mean, what would I tell her? What would I tell her? She must be worried sick. A battalion of U.S. 1st Air Cavalry clashes with North Vietnamese regulars in the central coastal plain near Bong San. Heavy and accurate sniper fire, zeroed in by telescopic sights, keeps our forces pinned down and dug in. Supporting fire from airmobile gunships helps to drive off the calm, estimated to number about 150. After the fighting, copters put down to evacuate the wounded. Two Americans were listed as dead. One was a machine gunner, and the second his company commander, who took over the machine gun from his fallen comrade and was killed himself. Thirteen GIs were wounded, four enemy soldiers were counted among the casualties. Hey man, you glad to finally get uh, settled down? Oh. You okay? What's wrong? <laughs> Today? <laughs> Today was a lot, man. What do you, what do you mean? I took pictures of the body <laughs> and <laughs> both sides. <laughs> Did you kill anybody today? Yeah, I had to. That's that's why we're here. And <laughs> were you scared? Or <laughs> Did you, did you even care about it? No, I, I wasn't. I wasn't scared. I, I wasn't scared. Uh, that's what we're here for. We have to. These, these are enemies. These are bad people. <laughs> but, but they're people, Arvin. They're people. <laughs> this. They're, they're bad people. They're enemies. What are you? You're just here to take photographs. <laughs> But to them, we're the enemy.
the, the, the things I'm seeing, man. It's, it's not fucking right. It's not. There's, there's fucking people being killed. Fucking one mile from here, and no one fucking bats an eye. And we're the ones killing them. <laughs> Why is this happening? Why is humanity come? Why have we come to this? <laughs> I just, I just want to go home. watch their babies die in front of them. Innocent families ripped apart. He couldn't take it. So he ended it. I don't get it. 
He'll never see his daughter grow up. He'll never see her first day at school. He'll never see her blossom into a young woman. He'll never get to walk her down the aisle when she falls in love. He'll never grow old with his wife. She'll sit in grief, holding on to all that she has left. Her daughter. Some may call what he did selfish, but what he seen would never leave him. Ever. The horrors. He captured them. History. Just not the good kind. What are we doing? Why am I here? What's happening? I just want to go home. Buddy. I'm so ready for the freaking barbecue, dude. I'm so ready. 
This is going to be great. Let's, let's party, Arvin. Let's party. Let's let's have a good time and uh, let's celebrate the, the, your home, huh? This compilation is protected under copyright by Pam's Productions Incorporated, Dallas. All rights reserved. In the Northeast, we're on top. <laughs> WPTR victory on the go. go. Okay? Yeah, I, I'm fine. It's just it's something that doesn't seem right. Sure. Uh, I don't. I don't know. Um. Do you? Can I get you anything? Do you want some food? Um. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Arvin, where are you going? I, I'm just going inside. I'll be a minute. Something just doesn't feel right. It's... I mean, that has to be normal, right? I mean, you just need time. Time to, to feel okay. I don't know. What, what was happening over there? I, I don't know if that was right. I really don't know. I know. I just, I just don't feel good. I don't feel good. I know, Arv, but you're still the same person. You're still the same kind, gentle, my little boy. I, I think I just need some time alone. But you just got back. That's the point, Mom. That's the point. When the music's over
When the music's over here When the music's over Turn up the lights Turn up the lights Turn up the lights What the music is your special friend Day and sound fire is in the intent Music is your only friend uh. How are you feeling, Arv? Fine. Are you sleeping okay? Yeah, it's just I get these nightmares. Um, flashbacks of things I've... Never mind. Oh, it's okay, Arv. You can tell me. Actually, I don't want to talk about this. Is there anything I can do to help? No, I'm fine. Just, just leave it. I'm sure it'll go away, Mom. It'll be fine. Okay. Just, please, don't be so hard on yourself. I won't. Uh, it's okay. I can do it myself. I got it. Relax. Uh, just let me help with something, please. <laughs> God! I just want to do something right for once! so hard on yourself. You've already been through so much. You've lost your friends. I mean, nobody could imagine in their wildest nightmares the terrible things you must have seen. And you are still here fighting. All you need to do is, you just need to take a break and just, just rest. Yeah, I don't need reminded, Mom, but thanks. Um, I'm gonna get some fresh air. I'll I'll be back later. Well, I gotta go to work. I won't be home until later. Will you be okay by yourself? Yeah, that's fine. I'll I'll see you later. Okay, bye. And son, please be safe. So what are you doing here? I heard you sold uh, substances in this area. You sound like a fucking cop. No, 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 I'm not. Do I look like a cop? Judging by your legs, I'm guessing you're back from now. Right. And a lot of you boys down here, good for business. I'm assuming you want to take your mind off what happened down there. Yeah. Had an uncle down in Nam. Came back, lost his mind. But this was just the ticket out. How do I take it? Oh, it ain't hard. Just tie a belt around your arm real tight. Inject the magic and feel the love.
American hero, a true soldier for the United States of America. Go Vietnam! What the f- 
fuck are you doing? Oh, we're swearing now, are we? I can do what I like. You don't know what I've seen over there in Vietnam. <sighs> Drinking is not going to help when you're in a headspace like this. Look, let's just sit down and talk about it. Talk about what? What did they do to you in that war? It was they. I chose to go. I chose to go over to Vietnam. Drinking is not going to help. Well, it does something. I don't know, it takes my mind off the fact that I'm nothing but a fucking cripple now, can't you see that? Arvin, I understand you're in a lot of pain right now, but please don't take it out on me. I've been nothing but good to you. I didn't even want you to go in the first place. This is not helping, Mom. Then what can I do to help? I don't know. I don't know. I can't do anything now. I can't have kids. I can't walk down the aisle when I get married. I'm just nobody now. I can't do anything. I'm so sorry. You know that I'm always here for you. I just need you to relax. <sighs> Once I have another drink, then I'll relax. No, Arvin. No. I know you've been drinking too. I can smell the whiskey on you. Well, I, I've been stressed. Stressed about you! And yet you can't understand why I want another drink? No, Arvin! What? What's this? It, it says it's for me. What is it? It's addressed to me. I can't have you read this. Why? Look, I just can't. Arvin, please, just understand. Well, I don't understand. Tell me why, Mom. I... I struggled when you went away. I mean, I... I really struggled. Suicide? You... you were going to take your own life? How... how could you? That's so selfish! How could you leave? That's what it felt like you were doing to me! Disappearing and not coming back! I struggled! Because I thought something bad was going to happen to you, so yeah! My thoughts got carried away! already lost my father. I already lost my husband because of war. And you knew this. And still, you come to me and tell me you're going. I didn't understand. I struggled because I, I truly believed that you weren't coming home to me. I'm really sorry. I just don't know what to do. But I have to figure this out myself. Just please don't hurt yourself because of me. No, Arvin. I'm okay. Now that my, my boy's home. Everything is going to be okay. Go get some sleep, Mom. You can relax now. You too, honey. I'll see you in the morning. Can I read it? Good night, Arv. My dearest Arvin, 
I'm sorry. I am sorry for bringing you into this horrible world where wars turn gentle sons into hardened killers, all in the name of patriotism. I'm sorry that you felt you had to prove how brave you are by signing up to die in a conflict that was not your fight to fight. I'm sorry that I never told you how proud I was to be your mom. Because I am, I am proud that you had the courage to fight for what you believed was right, even though I was scared for you to go. Your father and grandfather I would be so proud of you. But most of all, I'm sorry that I won't be there to hold you as you take your last breath, nor you to hold me as I take mine. I love you, son. Mom. Do not come near me! Get Arvin, the fuck away from me! I just want to talk. Okay? <coughs> Look what you're doing to yourself. Arvin. <laughs> it's freezing out here. And you're... You're drinking? <coughs> Look, Arvin. Look, take this. Take this. Clean yourself up. Thanks. Arvin, you need help. Arvin. You need to talk to someone. Can you talk to me? Sure. Okay, I know a place where we can go. else to say to you but sorry. You tried to save my life, George. But no, I still went over to Vietnam and I fucked up. I mean, look at me. I look at what's left of me. I did what I could. I was just looking out for you. But I could tell it's as soon as you looked at that poster, the smile on your face, there's nothing I could have done to stop you. Why do you try? You know I lost my brother out there. For what? Nothing. The last letter I got from him, he was telling me how he knew he wasn't coming back. I could have chosen to just 
sit there and mourn him. Sit there and cry. But I chose to stop anyone else from going over there and having to write a letter like that. That's why I helped. Well, I'm sorry. I learned that the hard way. Everything is so fucking glamorized. Like, why? You know, movies, they make violence seem so cool. You know, like John Wayne, Steve McQueen, Clark Gable. Maybe just being an actor is cool. <laughs> I can't be anybody now. Unless I... I don't know. Wait, what can I do? I can't do anything. And... I'm struggling to accept that, George. I... I've been drinking and... drinking a lot. It dumbs things slightly, but... Just drinking? That's all? No. Then what else? I took heroin, George. I took heroin and... It helped. You know? It felt like a... Dreamland. Everything went away for... Just a small bit of time. Everything. Everything felt... Perfect. Arvin. There are other ways out of this. Like what, George? Like what? I took another human's life. I seen woman... Ba baby be murdered. My childhood friends went to Vietnam. It never came back. The photographer took his own life because of what he saw over there. He murdered himself. He chose to not exist rather than go home to his wife and his kids, see his family. Because he, because he couldn't take what he saw. What humans done to the world, and I was part of that. I helped feed that problem, George. Life is meant to be precious and cherished. And we've seen the opposite of that. Humans just <laughs> killing each other. And babies, fucking babies. For nothing. Just all for nothing, George. And I just feel empty. I feel rotten. My life will never be the same. My mom never raised me like this. You know, I... I wanted so many things before I went over to Vietnam. And now I just... I just want to be happy. For this war to end. So if I can feel safe and comfortable, even for just a second, I'm gonna stick that needle in my arm, George. Well, how about you channel that energy, Arvin? Use that anger for something good. Try and help all these young men who think it's the right choice to go off to Vietnam, to do what you did. They don't know what it's like. You've been there, you understand. Just speak to them. Just, just a couple words. Let them know what it's like. Maybe just, if they, if they saw you, maybe that might be enough. Maybe that'll give you a purpose as well. Find a different way out, Arvin. Maybe you're right. I, 
I've seen it in the flesh. The horrors of the screaming. Well, let me get you on the right track. There's a rally and a protest that my group are having. It would be an honor for you to speak. What do you say, Arthur? Okay. Yeah. I'll do it. Yeah. Breakfast where the news is real. Television children fill. Unborn living, living dead. Bullet strikes the homeless bill. And it's all It's all over. Hello, everybody. How we all doing? In the past month alone, we've had over 40 men from this university shipped off to Vietnam only to get themselves killed. men are getting thrown over like live bait. Why are we involved? Huh? What do you have to say to that, Nixon? These boys are being lured by brainwashing propaganda. They're being pulled into a war that we should never have been a part of in the first place. It shouldn't even be happening. But today, it isn't about us. Today, I'm here to introduce a hero, a real Vietnam soldier. Someone who I am proud to call my friend. I want to call to the stage Mr. Arvin O. Russell. If you're thinking about going over to Vietnam, fuck it now. Don't. Don't. What are you achieving if you go? What are you proving? You're some big tough guy? A big tough soldier? That's what I thought. That's what my friends thought. My friends are gone. They're dead. They will no longer be able to come home to their loved ones. They will never be able to see their children grow up. Their mothers and fathers have lost a child. Brothers and sisters have lost a sibling. All because they made us believe that going over to Vietnam would change us. Make us real men. A true American hero. But none of that is true. I witnessed fellow Americans die. I watched my friend take his own life from the horrors he's seen in Vietnam. Now I've come home with all of that in my head. And that will never leave. I've come home with no legs. No real support like they said they would give us. They are fighting with violence. We want to end this pointless war by fighting with peace. With love. And no more young dead men. Let's end this fucking war in Vietnam. Let's end it. What do you say to that, Nixon? What do you say to that? Hey, man. 
<laughs> hey George. That was that was totally great. Uh, thank you. You should, you should definitely come out to the next one. Uh, look, look. It's only a couple weeks. We'll get a bit, we'll get everyone else out, okay? You do the same exact thing, but you come up on stage and you just speak from the heart. Look, do exactly what you did. I still need some time alone. I'm not in the best headspace, but I'll think about it. I promise. I'll, I will get back. You to got you. this, man. Okay. I'll get back to you. I promise. Just I need some more time alone. That's, that's all I need. Some more time alone to get. Well, you take all the time you need. Right. We'll get you back out. You say those words from the heart. Yeah, I okay. will. I will. Just uh. Hey, look. You don't work today. Yeah. You know where I live. Just come. Just call me up for a couple of days. I will. Uh, Stay strong. Thank you. Look into my eyes and you'll see I'm the only one You've captured my love, stolen my heart, changed my life Every time you make a move, you destroy my mind and the I told you, Arvin. I told you this is a bad idea. This is all your fault. You can reduce me to tears Both with the same All the signs were there. Every breath that you take, every sound that you make, is a whisper in my Up all my life. Oh, the baby there. For just one kiss, I would surely die if you dismissed oh, me.
Get back! What happened, Arvin? I don't know. Do you know how many people you helped? I felt good when I was up there saying the speech. As soon as I came off the stage, all these thoughts came flooding back. Like it was nothing. You had such a big impact. You helped so many people. You were doing so well. I can't get these thoughts out of my head. They won't go away. They won't go away, George. Look, Arvin. You've got no choice. You're coming with me. You can't say no. It's gonna happen, okay? Okay. Things are gonna get better. Okay. You just have to trust me. Okay. I just... Thank you. I'm here today because uh, I want to uh, speak to you about my experience in Vietnam. You know, about five, six, so, God, it feels like hundreds of years ago. When I was signing up to go over there, I thought it was the best decision of my life. I ignored everyone telling me differently. I ignored my own mother, who already lost her grandfather and her husband. What I've seen over there, the horrors, the screaming. We you know we went over there to save lives. We didn't save lives. We took them. Hundreds. Thousands. I took lives. Watching your friends die. Innocent families dying. It's just I remember my my friend's last words before he hung himself. Because of what he's seen over there. That's so bad it was. He took his own life. He didn't come home to his wife or his his child, because of what he's seen, that's how, that's how bad it was, guys. He spoke to me before he did it. The night before. I just remember his last words saying, still play over my head to this day. He said, I want to go home. There is no moving on from Vietnam. It's like losing a family member. It's, it's always there. You just have to learn to live with it. And through the help of uh, George and his group, I found myself, my real purpose. This war should be over. We, as humans, should not be fighting.
cannot stop this revolution until the Vietnam War is over. I repeat, till the Vietnam War is over. We welcome all Vietnam veterans. We want all of them to join us and feel accepted. Like they can talk about their experiences in Vietnam. So who is ready to end this war in Vietnam? Do you think what you're doing is making a difference in this country? I mean, of course. Look around, look, look at all these protests happening, look at all these, these veterans like me coming forward and speaking about our horrible experiences in Vietnam and the way we're treated when we come home. It's, it's not good. No. Uh, we set up this foundation to help people like Arvin here. And uh, I feel like that should be done. You too, Mom. Life's about finding the beauty in yourself. And once you do that, then you can really see the beauty in others and all of the beauty around you. At the end of the day, nothing matters. Your purpose is to just be alive. There isn't an answer to all of this or a meaning to life. So we need to stop spending hours trying to look for one. Spend it fulfilling the one you have. We're all just balls of energy trying to get by. And if someone tries to bring you down or hurt you, it's just a self-reflection of themselves and how they're feeling. They perceive everything how they perceive themselves. And maybe they just need a hug. It just took me a war and losing both my legs to realize that. But then sometimes it takes something bad to happen to realize all the good around you. I love you, Mom. I love you too, son. <laughs>